wonderful day to be inside here in Greater Detroit. And we welcome you inside Taylor Lanes in Taylor, Michigan for the second event in the PBA six event versatility swing. This is your Chameleon Championship. Glad you're spending part of your Sunday with us. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson with you. And over the course of the last few weeks, we've used the term bonus bowling. Two weeks ago, it was the women. Last week, it was the seniors. This week, literally, there is bonus bowling due to a major scoring malfunction earlier in the week. Originally, this tournament was slated to be a three-match three match men's finals, but because of a huge computer scoring error, the integrity of the tournament was threatened. So an executive decision was made to add another match featuring Mike Machuga and Sean Rash. So today, the fans at home, they get a bonus match. More bowling for the same low, low price. We're working to work just as hard, and bonus work for us. So we begin with Sean Rash taking on Mike Machuga. This is going to be a great matchup to start. The Cranker versus the Pure Stroker. Mike Machuga looking for a second career title. And the winner of that one will take on Brian Kretzer, the big Buckeye fan. He's in enemy territory this week. He's seeking his first title if he is to win. The big nasty, Wes Malott, would be next up in his grill. And Wes Malott off to a great start this season. But your number one seed is Bill O'Neill. Bill O'Neill making back-to-back -back shows for the first time in his career for his second last week to Walter Ray Williams Jr. And we conclude with the second PBA Women's Series event of the season. Michelle Feldman with her second crack at a title this season. Take a look at our stepladder format. And number one seed, Bill O'Neill, perhaps the most accomplished PBA bowler without a title yet. And we begin with Mike Machuga, just one career Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour title. It came in 2005, the Greater Omaha Classic, and it just happened to be rolled on this very same chameleon oil pattern. Hmm, I see a trend. Maybe, perhaps, we're onto something. He celebrated that win with the now famous Machuga flop. Can't wait to see it again. Long ways away from that. <laughs> Danced on that gutter for a long time, Randy. And we'll get into the oil pattern later, but you're not supposed to play the outside part of the lane on the chameleon pattern. trying to calm himself down. His best finish last year was fifth at the Atomic Championship in Cheektowaga, just outside of Buffalo. Great pickup. Saves face. That's how it's done, man. You can't draw it up any better than that. Get the one over into the 10. The ball will take out the two and the four. And Mike Machuga oh, avoids the early open frame. So up now, young Sean Rash, after starting his career 7-0 on television, he lost to Norm Duke in the first semifinal match of this season's first event, the PBA World Championship. How about that break? Trip 2-8-10 to start. And who can forget the last time we saw Sean Rash on television as we take a look. Now, this is where you're supposed to play on the chameleon pattern, that deep inside line. But last time Sean Rash was on television, he accrued $2,100 in shot clock violation fines. Told us a couple distractions, had bad footing all week, and admitted it's still in his head a little bit. Oof, Brooklyn. Opportunity as that one went left of the head pin. Using two different bowling balls, one on the right lane, one on the left lane. So obviously for Sean Rash, not the same ball reaction. That's going to be straight and hard at the six. So Rash starts strike spare. The 26-year-old native of Wichita, Kansas, takes a seat. And Machuga from Erie, Pennsylvania, steps up. And a washout spare in the first. Washout, I like that. You're getting so good, Rob. Depends who you ask. And one of the perks of the season for Machuga, his health is finally in order. Now I'm, uh, I feel like I'm 
as healthy and strong as I've ever been in my in my career, and and uh, all my little tick tricks and tools are starting to come back, and I feel pretty sharp. So I'm looking forward to uh, to a good season. Two years ago was a groin injury. Last year, hernia surgery. Both of those coming about three weeks before the season started. And you can see right off the bat, no matter if you're playing the outside part of the lane or in, that this oil pattern is very touchy. It was the second lowest scoring pattern that we had all of last season. And not a lot of margin for error out on the lanes thus far. So another solid spare pickup for Machuga. Rash steps up in the third. He has gone strike spare as we take a look at how Sean Rash qualified this week for the Chameleon Championship. Another ball change, and that ball looked like a piece of charcoal. A lot of surface on it, very aggressive. And he's left himself with a really tough spare of the 3, 6, 9, 10. But watch this doll. This is how you create power. Look at the cup wrist at the top, and then he just uncups it onto the lane. He does a great job of stabilizing his spine going to the foul line, Rob. He said it was like a piece of charcoal. See how sandblasted that thing was? Looked like it had snow tires on it. Nice. Maybe put some chains on it. It is snowing outside here in Detroit. Costly open frame. Three, six, nine, ten. Trying to get that back pin. That's the tough one. Probably the hardest non-split conversion out here on tour. Well, that one found the pocket and had the right delivery man to send that final message. And a super break there with something rolling over and taking the four pin out. Watch this. It's going to be the three pin that comes over and takes the four out. Machuga's second strike. Oh, man. Is he dancing with that gutter? And, you know, you can see this at release where his fingers are directly behind the bowling ball. Watch this, how his hand stays right up the back. Just a slight rotation there. That ball's on the one and a half board. But because of that roll, he gets it to read that part of the lane, which, quite honestly, I didn't think you could, you could do from out there and get the ball back and hook it into the pocket. Mike Machuga, he may have found something. Yes, he has back-to-back -back jacks for the former All-American at the University of Nebraska. Love that angle with the ball coming right in your grill. Takes a lot of nerves, a lot of skill, and some maple moxie to be playing the one-two board on television. So Rash, his effort now in the fifth. He has gone strike, spare, open frame nine, strike. Messenger, not strong enough. We've seen a lot of those rolling, lazy messengers the last couple weeks. I feel like Walter Ray Williams Jr. had a few last week, a little bit stronger than that. Oh. Well, last week, Walter Ray had one late that barely got the 10 out before the machine hit the pin. And then he got a fast one. And that was really the undoing of Bill O'Neill, those two great breaks. But, you know, any pro will tell you that you got to have good breaks to win out here. Unfortunately, Sean Rash was not able to capitalize on the trip for the frame before this. So now he's looking to start stringing some strikes down by 15, sixth frame. And there's your strike, probably the cleanest strike he's had yet. In this opening match of our bonus bowling stepladder final.
the conclusion of Rash Machuga when we return to Taylor, Michigan. The Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour on ESPN is brought to you by Lumber Liquidators. Hardwood flooring for less. By GEICO. 15 minutes could save 15% on your car insurance. Visit GEICO.com. By Motel 6, the official lodging partner of the PBA. And by Denny's, where America's favorite breakfast is now available to go. Real breakfast 24-7.